Um, last week, uh, I spoke about we were once darkness, and now we are light in the Lord. And then the last part of it says, aim higher. And this is connected to that, the idea of aiming higher uh, with our spoken words. Okay, because we, we do a lot of communication verbally, but we also do a lot of communication non-verbally. You all know that, right? Anybody who's had any training in psychology, you know that's even a majority of the, of the communication is nonverbal. It's the look in our eyes. It's if we're looking at our watch or not, if we're in a hurry, if, we look, if we're rolling our eyes. It's usually not a good sign to the other person. <laughs> so what does God think? He thinks you're here for a reason, I'm here for a reason, and one of those reasons is to see lives changed as they accept the kingship of Christ over their life, right? And I say this often too, but he didn't say, go ye therefore and make converts. He said, go ye therefore and make disciples. And there's a really big difference between a convert and a disciple. A disciple is somebody who's continually staying hungry and wanting to be more like Christ every day. That's our definition of it. So aiming higher, that's for all of us. Aiming higher means, was there anything I did today that was not like Christ, but am I doing better today than I was yesterday on my mission of being more like him? That's so what are we doing with the spoken words of our mouth? That's, that's the theme today. And then I said fearlessly proclaim the gospel because I love that expression. Paul uses it twice in Ephesians chapter 6. And you also know that the armor of God, hopefully if you've been around a while, you know that's a chapter, Ephesians 6, where we list the armor of God. And the sword of the Spirit is, yeah, you all went to Sunday school, you know that one, right? So we'll get there. But today we're going to talk more about the sword of the Spirit. And as the weeks go by, we can talk as the Lord is leading us about other parts of the armor. So in Ephesians 6.13, it says, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Is this an evil day? <laughs> I'll start with easy questions. <laughs> That's pretty easy to figure out, isn't it? And the, verse 17 says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word, and, and the word for word there is rhema. And Manny said that too. Right? I don't know if you caught that while he was praying or before he went back down to his seat. Which is, anybody heard what rhema means? Anybody here? There's a college out in Oklahoma that Kenneth Hagin found it called rhema. Right? And revelation is the common understanding of it. But it's, there's more to it, see, because rhema often refers to the spoken words of God. Whether it be through Jesus, the prophets, the apostles, I'll say, or Manny. Or that guy in the hotel, right? It's a word of God in season. It's, it's God's word spoken through his people, which is why I've said it ties into the prophetic conference that we're doing. Because you might not be called to be a prophet in title, but you are called to be prophetic. The world would call that intuition. They would call it, I had a hunch. I had a sense about something. It's also called discernment. Holy Spirit will increase your discernment. Okay, do you believe that? Yeah, but, and why wouldn't we want more of that? Of you have the Spirit of God inside. You have a furnace because the Bible says that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit and that there's a fire in the Holy of Holies. There's a fire. So that fire inside of you is burning whether you know it or not. You can fan the flame. You can, you can increase that fire or you can let it dwindle down, but you are the temple now and you want to keep sharpening all of these skills, not because you want a great name in the church. This is the great name in the church, servant. But, but the currency of the kingdom is lives that are changing. So how many lives change because you brought the kingdom to people? It's unlimited amount. I mean, people telling us they're watching from Australia and New Zealand and like all over the world. Like, you don't know who you're touching. You're never going to know it all. But I want to hear him say, well done. Right? That's a good thing to aspire to, not to strive. Because striving implies, I'm working, working, working for you, Jesus. How come I'm not getting my answer prayer? That's not how this works. There's, there's a war going on between evil and good. And that's this chapter, really, is spiritual warfare. So take up the armor. Take up the tools that I've given you. Be aware. Be discerning about what the power of your words is, good and bad. 
death is also in there too, isn't it? I don't want death in my mouth. I want life coming out of my mouth. That doesn't mean we're not firm with people when we have to be firm. That could be the greatest loving thing you could do for them is to be firm. Tell them not to do something because it's sin. Now, you could say that in a harsh way, but let there be life in what you're saying. All right, I think you get it. In the book of Acts, Philip's there, and God says, I want you to go down to the road, okay? What would we have said? Why? <laughs> right? Well, we would have said, why? I, I don't have time for this right now. If, if I agree it's a good idea, maybe I'll go. No, no, he just went. And then he said, I want you to go over to the guy in the chariot over there. Why? I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> And it wasn't until he went over to there that the guy said, I'm reading this book here called the Bible, the book of Isaiah. Can you help me? And Philip probably went, thanks. Now I know why. And man, amazing. Got the guy baptized right there. Amazing, right? He was the right man at the right time who had his ears open, wasn't trying to know all the steps. He just needed to know the next step. That's discernment. <laughs> so the, the example he gave me was, say, Say you own a business and you have two warehouses, warehouse one on the left, warehouse two on the right. But instead of the warehouse idea in, in the natural, think of it as you have a bank account over here in your heart and a bank account over here in your heart. There's two different storehouses that you can pull from when you need to. And in the middle of that, there's somebody called a dispatcher. Anybody work for a company that had a dispatcher? Key. It's a key role. But you have a dispatcher, too, because you've got a gate on your mouth. And something decides when something should come out and when it shouldn't. But not just what comes out, how it should come out, and what you should say. Hmm. That's a big role, being a dispatcher. Because death and life is in the power of your Spoken words. Trisha can speak words with a look. You don't even need to know what the words are because she's making her point really good. I'm not looking at her right now, but I will. I love you. Now, in Romans, we hear this language that says, according to the flesh. Those who live according. Did you ever think about this? The word accord? Your flesh is in accord with sin, when you're living according to the flesh. But if you're living according to the Spirit, you're in accord with a whole different set of rules, whole different reality frame that God would want us to have. So that's according to the Spirit. So one warehouse wants a ready, fire, aim. My flesh, my reaction, I lose my temper, boom, nasty stuff comes out of my mouth. The other side is ready, pray. Yeah? Everything. At all times, pray. Before you open it, pray. I know what I want to say, Lord, but what do you want to say? Well, and the guy's waiting for an answer. So what? So what? Just say, pretend you're from Tennessee. No, but really, we forget how fast people talk up here. What's the rush? You say something wrong, you can't get it back. Be discerning. Be discerning. Don't just blurt it out. So this is it in, in Romans. It says, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. And I'm saying the death words are coming out from one warehouse, and the life words are coming out of the other warehouse, death and life. And then you have this choice. Every minute of every day, there is a dispatcher in your heart that's deciding what gets out, released into the atmosphere. It's a gate. That's a gatekeeper of what comes out. 